I've often thought breath is this really powerful symbol of life. It's this powerful symbol of hope and life and energy. And I'd really love to uh, make an artwork that's just about breath. So that's what set me on this path. I'm Keith Dougal and the idea for this um, art installation called Catching Your Breath um, came from me for many years wanting to do something with breath. Um, I've worked with glass for over 25 years and I've blown glass for many of those years and so breath is an important part of the whole process of, of making blown glass at least. I've always been interested in what happens when you bring components together and what does that mean. So I started thinking about the bubbles as communities of people and representative of the community of people or the communities of people that come around patients in the hospital. So for every patient in, in the hospital there, there are not just doctors and nurses but there are people who are cleaning the rooms, there are pathology staff, there are people working in the offices, there are people who are keeping the buildings maintained, there are ambulance drivers, there are paramedics, there's uh, a whole community of people that have been part of that person's health, not to mention their family um, and the visitors that come to see them. That's what the nets ended up coming to symbolise for me, is, is this uh, community, this healing community, this uh, caring community that forms around a person in, in the hospital. My name's Tom and I'm a glass blower from Adelaide. I have a studio at Jam Factory there and I've been blowing glass for about seven years now. Uh, Keith Dougal, the artist, invited me down to uh, participate in blowing these pieces. So I come from a production background where we try and make um, our time in the hot shop blowing glass very efficient and um, time efficient and energy efficient. So um, I've tried to increase the capacity of what we can blow in this studio here. This studio has, hasn't blown this much glass, I think, ever before, so it's a really exciting project. Glass blowing is not an individual thing. Uh, there's a team of people that are involved, especially in making the larger bubbles. This is one of the smaller or medium-sized bubbles, but some of them were quite large. We all worked as a team in the Poetina Glass Studio to make all of these bubbles and I think in the end we spent about eight weeks, not all at once, but spread over a, a number of months um, making these bubbles. So we would make up to 20 or so a day on a good day. My name's Zeke Torrance. I'm almost 16 and I've been working with glass on and off for the past three years or so. I've been assisting Keith and Tom with this project. It's quite like demanding, it's a bit tricky sometimes, but I enjoy it working together as a team and kind of having to guess and get used to knowing what the other people are going to be doing so you can be prepared to be there ready for them. I think the um, project has a lot of challenges, you know, I think there's a lot of moving parts in this project, uh, working with the hospital and the engineers and everything and so we've tried to tailor make our production and our working together to kind of fit around those goals of the project. We need quite a lot of bubbles, we need them to be um, certain thicknesses and um, certain quality of the glass as well. So It's really hot work, uh, working in front of a really large glory hole which is a reheating chamber that's about 1150 degrees inside um, so you've got a lot of heat blasting out at you you've got sweat dripping off you you're getting radiant heat from the from the glass itself that's burning your arms and your face um, so there's there's a lot of shielding required there's um, a lot of teamwork required the bubbles are 
really unique and each one is individual and handcrafted so I felt like I had a lot of leeway in um, yeah being able to bring some of you know you know my uh, techniques to the glass and really being able to be quite playful with it. So the process of somebody donating their breath was quite a special one. So we would uh, invite them to answer a few questions about themselves first. The first question was basically, what are you doing in the hospital today? For some people they would be working, uh, others they were a patient or perhaps they were visiting somebody that was a patient. So we'd get a whole mix of staff and other people donating their breath. The second question is, as you think about the community of the Royal Hobart Hospital, is there something that you love or appreciate about it or hope for it? And the third question is, is there something that you personally are hoping for at this time? My name is Rosie Hutchins and I'm a hospice volunteer. Today's my first day as a hospice volunteer. I've had a lot to do with the hospital. Uh, I've had my children here and I've spent a lot of time here both as a child and as an adult. And so I feel like there's a part of the hospital that um, is in me and me in it. I feel as though it's my little tiny token, a tiny opportunity for me to be able to leave a part of me behind in the hospital that is so freely given to me over the time. Okay, so I'm Kate Corkill and James Corkill. So we're in at the hospital. Um, James is a patient. The um, staff have been amazing, really helpful, lovely to James. Anything Jamesy needed, they went and got it straight away um, and they've been very patient with us, <laughs> which has been lovely, yeah. It's up to you, but if you want to think about what you're hoping for as you blow your breath in. Yep. And, uh, so my name's John Wright. I work for Carity Aboriginal Corporation. So I look after clients with chronic health issues such as diabetes, heart conditions, mental health. The biggest thing I'm hoping for the hospital is that um, their adolescent mental health beds get opened and are manned appropriately so that our youth in the community can be looked after better. Well, growing up um, in the Aboriginal community, I've always been extremely lucky to be a part of not just the community, but everything. And now that I've grown up, I'm able to actually come back and work for my community and work for my own people. I'm extremely grateful and thankful for the whole team at Royal Hobart Hospital. And Dr. Hahn there, he, he saved my life and I'm forever in their debt basically because without them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today. So my name's Jane Von Berto. I'm admitted to the maternity ward at the Royal Hobart Hospital. I've been there for six weeks, got another three weeks to go for monitoring of my twins. And my partner and my daughter use the Ronald McDonald House every weekend to stay in so I can visit them and they can visit me. Stella and Terry were in the hospital um, and these glass bottles were being down there and um, they stopped and they both put their breath in one and I was jealous and I thought wow because that's going to be in the hospital now forever and um, I'm glad I've actually got a chance to do it as well as something as a family because we don't get to do much of that at the moment. Uh, so I'm Naomi, I'm a paediatric nurse who works on the children's ward as well as working in currently the paediatric neurology service. Well, this initiative, it just gives me a, such a sense of um, peace and calm and the donation of a breath is um, so special and I think it just reflects on um, what we're all striving to achieve here is that, you know, just to be able to support and, 
and to comfort each other and to um, provide an act of kindness on a, on a daily basis and just to work together. Um, and I think this sort of reflects that, that, that breath is just that little donation of, of kindness. Thanks, Naomi. You're all right, pleasure. Let's now get your precious breath in it. So your breath is in there and the archaeologist And it was a really interesting process um, when, when somebody blew their breath into the bubble because at first it was just this empty container and we'd pass them around and they're just pieces of glass. But as soon as somebody blew their breath in, they, it felt like that changed, something happened. And uh, suddenly they're there holding this bubble like a baby uh, because it, it felt like it was a special thing. It now had their breath in it. It was kind of like a symbol of their life. So there was kind of this reverent moment where they were holding this, this bubble on their lap actually find ourselves carrying them differently and caring for them differently once they had people's breath in them. What did you hope for? What did you say about your sisters and your brother? He wanted to get home to healthy, get home healthy, being able to walk and see his brother and his sister and his two bunnies. You get to to get a little glimpse into their lives and what they were hoping for at that time. Some were visiting a loved one and going through a really tough time. Others had just had a baby and were feeling joyful. Um, others had been working for over 30 years in the hospital as a staff member and for them it was special to be able to share a little bit about what it's like to work here. So there's a whole spectrum of stories and lives that are all intersecting in this hospital community and that's kind of in the artwork and I love that. I was very, very nervous when we started this morning because I wasn't sure if the bubbles were going to move on the way up or how bumpy the ride would be. We're just hanging bundle number six. Yeah, I'm gradually feeling a little calmer, but um, I'll probably not really be uh, feeling totally relaxed until it's all up and finished which hopefully will be late today or early tomorrow morning. What Keith is trying to do is do a really large scale installation um, for a hospital and there isn't projects like that out there where, where you really make um, this much blown glass in, in one piece. For Australia I think this is bordering on a first and so in, in that sense I think this is a really exciting and challenging project. Um, I've just tried to do the best job that I can do um, in the time that's been given to me and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to work in Tasmania, it's so beautiful here. But there's been a really strong community behind me um, who have been uh, giving me feedback about my work along the way, uh, helping me solve problems at a practical level and all different levels. And they have helped me with the installation, they've helped me with this filming, um, they've really made a difference in my capacity to rise to the challenges of this artwork and there have been really some significant challenges because it's been such a drawn out process. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for that community behind me. What I enjoy about working on a project of this scale um, is that it scares me, um, it's, it's challenging. There are lots of problems to solve, there are lots of unknowns to sort of grapple with and so uh, anything that's at heights is quite challenging. Anything that's uh, suspended above people's heads, especially when it's glass, is very challenging. There's a lot of safety considerations to think about. There's um, engineering considerations. Yeah, I think it's very much the challenge um, and the unknown and the excitement of doing something new. The fact that all the, um, the breaths are going together just unifies um, what it, the project's about. It's about um, coming together. Um, so I think um, it's so special that everybody 
from all different disciplines um, and all different walks of life in the hospital get the opportunity to, to do that and to all come together. I feel included and a little bit important, to be honest, and it's a nice feeling to have, yeah. yeah. So now I feel like we're starting to become one and not have this divide. And hopefully we, we close that divide more and more and more. You know, I, I have a daughter who, who visits this hospital regularly uh, for treatment every 12 weeks. And there are times when you really need a lift, where you really need something to distract you, um, but not just distract you, but give some life, give some hope when things feel tough, when things are really hard. And I really want this artwork to bring joy, to bring a sense of, you know, wow, not only are they these breath bubbles and there's a whole story behind every bubble in the artwork, but you can just read them as giant raindrops, you know, coming down from the skylight, from the sky, refreshing things. And there's lots of different ways to read it. So, you know, hopefully from a little kid right through to, a, you know, an adult, people will have some really positive ways to engage with it and get a sense of life and hope of what I'm hoping they'll come away with.